At Rowan University, the College of Science and Mathematics and School of Health Professions offers students more than 50 academic programs in basic and applied sciences, mathematics, and health professions. We promote a student-centered approach to learning in a research-rich environment. The professors I've worked with, they're always with you every step of the way. I originally wasn't going to do research on campus, and then my professor for Chem 1 had approached me and asked me if I wanted to work on one of the projects, and I thought it was a really cool and interesting opportunity. I have friends that go to different schools, and they're also in the chemistry programs, and nobody I know really does anything like the research that I'm doing. Students have small class sizes where they can, in class, get their questions answered and interact with the professor. They have really taken ownership of the research. They're telling you what they should do next. That's when you see that change. That's when you see them grow professionally. It's helpful that when we do have these labs as classes that we learn how to use the tools that are given to us, like the hydrostatic weighing lab and then also the exercise phys lab. I feel like it makes it so much easier to go out there into the real world and be able to be confident in my skills. You, you can't put a price tag on practical skills. And we want to make sure that we're putting out the best, so we make sure that our students know the skills while they're in those lab settings before they go out and even do their internships. We're equipping them with everything they need so that they can be successful in any path that they choose. Whether it's training the next generation of scientists and healthcare professionals, or providing all students with a foundation in science and mathematics, the work we do today will impact the scientific thinking in our society for generations to come. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Bridget Malone, and I am the Public Relations and Events Coordinator for the College of Science Mathematics here at Rowan. It's my pleasure to also introduce our Assistant Dean, Jennifer Rivelli, who we're excited to have joining us here today. Hello, all. Welcome. Um, today, we have a wonderful panel of faculty and students who will be giving you a glimpse of what it's like to be a biological science student here at Rowan. Before we begin, I have just a few housekeeping items. Our panel will be doing a brief presentation during which all of our guests will be kept on mute with their cameras off, but I strongly encourage you to enter any questions you have into the chat box throughout the session. Then following the presentation, we'll have a question and answer period with the panel. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Steve Bentevengo, the head of the Department of Biological Sciences. Well, hello everyone. I guess that's my cue to start. My name is Dr. Steven Bentevanga. I'm the head of the Department of Biological Sciences. And I'm very new here. I've only been here at Rowan for four weeks. I came from the University of Wisconsin system. And I had other job opportunities, and I'll tell you why I chose this one. It's because of the people here. I saw really talented faculty. I saw a lot of opportunities. You're going to hear from different people uh, about the Rowan family. And what I can tell you is in the month that I've been here, I have been welcomed into that family. And uh, it's all because of the, the warm people that I've met here. I'm going to introduce the other panelists. I'd like to start with the students. We have two students in the room with us today. First is Rachel Wilson. Rachel is a pre-med major. She's a junior majoring in biological sciences and also minoring in psychology. She's currently doing research in the lab of Dr. Stephanie Spielman, who's our computational biologist. And the research that Rachel is doing with Dr. Spielman also involves Dr. Andrea Hunt, the director of music therapy. They're developing computational tools to analyze electroencephalogram data. Rachel, can you say hello and tell everyone what you plan to do after you graduate? Yes, hello. Um, my name is Rachel Wilson. Um, I am a junior. Um, after I graduate, I plan on going to medical school and furthering my career um, in pediatrics. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, next uh, up is Matthew Pierce. Matthew is a senior who will be graduating this spring. He has double majors in both biological sciences and environmental science. He worked in the past in our ecological diversity lab with Dr. Michael Grove, Dr. Courtney Richmond, 
and Dr. Nathan Rule studying zooplankton diversity. He's currently working in the lab of Dr. Charles Schutte in the School of Earth and Environmental Science uh, to develop auditory tools to produce a soundscape of local native birds. Uh, Matthew, you want to say hello and tell everyone what you plan on doing when you graduate? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Matthew Pierce, and after I graduate from Rome University, I will be attending the University of Georgia, and I will be getting my PhD in ecology. Okay, thanks, Matthew. I'm going to introduce the faculty members in the room, and then each of them will be narrating some of the slides that we have for you. First is Dr. Allison Krufka. We also have in the room with us Dr. Claude Krumenacher, and last but not least, Dr. Luke Holbrook. I'll let each of them introduce themselves. Hi, um, welcome. I'm Dr. Alison Krufka, and my specialty is uh, cell and developmental biology. Hi, I'm Claude Krumenacher. I'm an associate professor with dual appointment in biological sciences and in molecular and cellular biosciences. And I'm a virologist. I study viruses. And hello and welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Luke Holbrook. I'm a professor of biological sciences and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist who studies the evolution of mammals. Uh, and I'm also going to be the first person uh, kind of taking you through the presentation we're doing. Uh, so we're going to start by talking about academic programs. And uh, so if we can uh, we'll, in the next slide, we're going to just give you a little bit of a preview without a lot of details on the specific programs. You can ask about those later if you're interested, but I just want to give you an idea of what we have and what you might do with them. So uh, we have two majors in biological sciences, the Bachelor's of, of Science uh, and the Bachelor of Arts in Biological Sciences. Um, the, the BS in Biological Sciences is uh, really what most of our students do, and especially if they are tracking towards something where a heavy science concentration is important, something like graduate school uh, or uh, a lot of health professions, though not necessarily all health professions, but a lot of them uh, either require or we recommend them doing the Bachelor of Science. Uh, the Bachelor of Arts, uh, a Bachelor of Arts across Rowan is distinguished from Bachelor of Science because it has uh, fewer courses in the major and more room for the student to do things like general education and other things. And that's uh, that uh, major we kind of designed to be something where you still have a strong uh, science background, but you can combine that with some other kind of thing, especially if you want to do something like double major. Um, so for instance, we might have students who are uh, double majoring in environmental science. Matthew Pierce actually is doing that, right? And he, you can, he might be doing that with the BS as well, but especially if you wanted to combine this with something like business or with writing or something like that, uh, or education, that's what the BA is kind of targeted for if you want to be able to have a biology degree but want to combine that with something else. Uh, students who are outside of biology might uh, get some kind of component of biological sciences by taking a minor in biological sciences, but that's not what our majors do. They're taking the major. Also mentioned here, we have a, uh, an accelerated four plus one degree, which means, uh, which is a BA or BS in biological sciences combined with a master of arts in education, uh, specifically in STEM education, that's science, technology, engineering, and math, if you're not up on these kinds of acronyms. Uh, and this is basically where you do your four-year degree, and then you'd add a, a year of a master's degree in education, essentially. Uh, and this is, the, you know, the BA is very conducive to this because it gives you room to take those education courses that you might want to do to make it easier for you to, to get that master's. Uh, but we also have students who can do this in, with a BS. Uh, and I want to mention that if you're a biology major, besides what we offer in the department, there are lots of other programs that offer courses that uh, a biology major might be interested in. So they could be uh, things like we have the uh, program in molecular and cellular bio biosciences. Um, we also have things like the environmental science ma major that's uh, or program that's in the School of Earth and Environment, uh, psychology. Uh, biochemistry, these are all programs that students often will uh, partake of as a way of kind of um, uh, adding to the experience they get in biology. Uh, let me say a little bit more about uh, on the next slide to talk about some of the advantages of our programs. And um, I've already mentioned things like 
how we have a pretty, well, we have a very flexible program, uh, flexible in the sense that uh, just like I mentioned with the BA, it has more room in it. Even the BS is not a major where every single thing you do is a requirement for the BS. There's room in that major for you to get a minor or to even in some cases get a double major. Um, so there are ways for you to add on to your experience. So you don't just come to college to go to biology school. You were, you're in college to be able to get more breadth than that. Um, it's flexible also in the sense that uh, you know, biology is a discipline that has a lot of breadth to it, more so than maybe any of the other uh, science disciplines that you would uh, hear about, like in chemistry or physics, which tend to be more sequential. There are lots of different areas of biology that you might want to explore, and you can specialize in some of those, or you can try to sample a lot of different ones through the electives that you get to take in the biology major. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you kind of customize your learning in the major. Um, this is good if you're for a whole variety of career options. Uh, so I mentioned things like, of course, we have lots of people interested in health professions, but also if you're interested in adding uh, things to say the BA or even in the BS, if you're doing writing or education, um, those are all things that allow for making this a very flexible major. Uh, the other thing I wanna focus on here, um, the last thing really for this is the small class sizes that we have. That's one of the hallmarks really across campus, but as, I think especially in our major where uh, a typical lab class is between maybe 24 and 26 students. It's all together for the majors courses. So not only, it's not as if you're in a big lecture room and then going to the lab, basically those 24 to 26 students are the ones you're doing that class with throughout uh, the course. And so you get a lot of individual attention that way. All right, so those were the main things I wanted to talk about regarding our academics. Um, we'll, we'll have more things about, for instance, we have, I should mention we have advising, but we'll also hear more about that when we talk about career paths in terms of things like the Office of Health Professions. I wanna highlight a couple of other things really about the department and the department culture. Uh, and that's, we'll start in the, uh, with the next slide, just to note that we have a lot of different expertise among our faculty members. This is a list of things that we could fit on the slide. Uh, there are more things than this around here. Uh, if you just kind of run your eyes over it, you'll probably see something that you find interesting. Uh, and I wanna point out that um, these diverse interests, uh, they translate into the classroom as well as into the research lab. And it's not as if a faculty member necessarily just does one of those things. Uh, integration has kind of been one of the main themes of 21st century biology. And that's something we like to try to emphasize in our program. Uh, the person in this slide, Dr. Lana Cruz, is a good example of an integrated person. She studies uh, microbes and in the guts of bees and ants. Uh, as a way of how that affects, how those uh, microbes affect the biology of their hosts. And she's looking at genes, she's looking at ecology, she's looking at behavior, she's looking at immune responses, she's looking at bees and ants, and she's looking at microbes. So there's a lot of different things that she's bringing together in that research. So there's a diverse, uh, um, a diversity of research, a diversity of faculty expertise. And as I mentioned, we, we bring this into the classroom uh, we bring it into the research labs that undergrads are participating in so that they get exposed to that and can kind of get a sense of this idea of integration as well. And speaking of students, I want to talk more about how we have, how we get students integrated into a community in our department. So in the next slide, talking a little bit about how we build communities. And there are lots of informal ways we do this. Here we've mentioned some of the formal ways we have it. We have clubs and activities. Uh, there's uh, opportunity for tutoring by peers, um, as well as things like seminars and external speakers who come in. The, the emphasis here is we want students to have opportunities to uh, interact with us, the faculty, to interact with each other so that they create uh, bonds with each other and that enhances their learning experience and their opportunities beyond Rowan. And also to create opportunities for them to uh, kind of build connections to the community, both on campus, outside of the department, and also off campus, so that they're building these connections with uh, the community outside of the campus as well. Uh, all right, and so that's kind of the end of my thing here. I'm gonna turn it over to 
uh, Dr. Claude Krumenacher, who's going to now talk more about undergraduate research in biology. Thank you very much. So there are a lot of opportunities for uh, students, undergrad students, to do research in biology. And as you've seen in the movie early on, research is very, very important at Rowan. And we want to provide as many opportunities to students to do research, all kinds of research. And you'll see that in biology, given the expertise of the faculty, you have really options to do research in very, very different fields. All the students have the option to work in a lab of a faculty on the actual research that this faculty is performing in the lab. Although research is not mandatory as part of the curriculum in biology, many students join a lab for several semesters to conduct projects under the supervision of a faculty. It's very, very important now in the curriculum of biological sciences uh, to integrate uh, research. So you have the opportunity to actually take research for credit in biology for a couple of semesters. But also some students join labs just as volunteers because doing research is quite fun. So why to do research as an undergrad? Because it's interesting. If you are curious, if you are really passionate about biology, you want to do research. And we provide all these opportunities uh, to work in a lab. As you've seen in the previous uh, slides, uh, there are a lot of different uh, options. You can do field biology. You can go outside. You can look at the ecology of lakes and ponds and streams in South Jersey. You can also work in a lab. If you are interested in working on viruses, that's what I do. I do it in my lab. We have people working on cells. We have people working on genetics. Um, Dr. Holbrook mentioned uh, Dr. Cruz who was working on bees. So we have bees on campus uh, to do this kind of research. These faculty are well-funded. So if they have funds, let's say, from the National Institutes of Health or the National Science Foundations, there are also opportunities for students to actually get paid to do research in the lab. All these faculty put a lot of effort in mentoring students in their labs. You go and you'll start by just doing an experiment. You're going to do what you're told to do, but very rapidly, you will be involved in designing experiments, analyzing data. You're not just there to be lab rats and just doing what you are supposed to do. You are involved in developing these research pro projects. We have a pretty good instrumentation uh, in these labs, given the variety of research that is going on, we can essentially do almost everything we want to do as researchers. We also increase the number of seminars and workshops that are available for students so that they can learn from people from outside who will come here and talk about their research. And then when you get successful in performing your experiments, you can go and present your um, results at various conferences, either in-house regionally or even nationally or internationally, if you have the opportunity to go to these meetings. So that's illustrated on the next slide where we see um, representation of students presenting posters at a university-wide symposium. This is a great way of exchanging uh, research interests between students. You're going to see posters on research that is very different from what you do. And you can learn from that. And then you can present to other students and hone your skills in presentations. And then you can go to regional and national meetings to present your science. There are um, several students who go there. Many of them in our departments get awards for their presentation. So we are really the top level of research for undergraduate students. Um, um, regionally, at least, and, and possibly also nationally. Uh, we have also 
um, a summer research program for undergrads. And um, students can do a 10 week research program intensive during the summer where they can actually get a stipend and be paid uh, to do research uh, in these labs during the summer. And it's really usually a very productive time for research. And this summer program also includes uh, workshops, also includes seminars uh, to really uh, provide all the aspects of intensive research in a lab. Now we can do all this and then we can uh, provide students with the research background that they need for their future career. Whatever you want to do after graduating in biology, research is a very important component of it. So having these opportunities to do research in very well equipped, very well funded and motivated labs with expertise is important for what you're going to do after you graduate from Rowan. And I want to let uh, Matthew uh, talk a little bit about his experience as a student. Yes, so I have been working in the ecological diversity group in biological sciences for three years now. And over those three years, I have presented at six different symposiums or conferences. And one was the Rome University Student Symposium and then one was the um, College of Math and Sciences Summer Symposium that I also presented my work at. And these are great events because you get to actually experience what it's like to be a poster presentation. And I have also have traveled to Maryland to present my work at a regional ESA conference, as well as into Philadelphia for smaller undergrad and graduate student symposiums. So I've gotten to really go out there and network and have all of these great experiences. But I also know a lot of people that have presented in Baltimore, Chicago, and San Francisco just based on the research that they were able to do at Rome University. All right, thank you, Matt. Uh, these um, presentations also allow students to network, to learn about what is available out there as possible places to continue their careers in grad schools, in medical schools, uh, and so on. So if you're really interested in doing research, whether you like to be outside in the fields or in the lab, or if you also just want to do computer research, we have now a lab where we do data science. Uh, so there are plenty of opportunities, very different opportunities to do research in these departments. And that will lead you to a successful career afterwards. Now I will um, introduce Dr. Krovka. Uh, who is going to talk about the efforts that we do uh, to um, drive you to the career that you want to do. Great, thank you, Claude. Um, again, I'm Alison Krupka, um, and um, I'm just going to spend a few minutes talking about the diverse career pathways that our majors take. Um, as uh, Dr. Holbrook pointed out, we have a real diverse um, curriculum, so students can specialize in particular areas, um, and that really supports these career um, pathways that our students take. So many of our students are very interested in the health professions, um, and um, they go on to various types of health professional schools. So medical schools, veterinary schools, we actually have a very strong pre-vet program. Um, our students get into wonderful uh, veterinary schools, um, physical therapy, um, dental assistants, dental school, um, all sorts of health professions. Some of our students go into accelerated BSN programs, some go right into medical schools, masters of public health. Um, those are all sorts of professional development schools that our students go on to um, related to health professions. And many biologists um, are very interested in health professions. But then uh, an example of, of Matthew, um, students go on to get master's and PhD programs. Um, and so they're going to go on to be research scientists. 
Um, so we have a good track record of getting people into master's and PhD programs um, in various subspecialties. So sometimes there are subspecialties like Matthews, which is ecology. Sometimes they're cell biology. Sometimes they're genetics, um, uh, evolutionary biology, really depending on what the student's interests are. Right? Some of them go and get a master's in biotechnology or a master's in, um, say, uh, uh, histopathology, um, all sorts of um, interesting career paths out of the graduate school programs. Um, and then many of our students go directly into biotech or pharmaceutical um, sciences um, industries right out of their undergraduate um, area. And then of course, um, food science is actually a really big industry in South Jersey. Um, and many of our students will go into food sciences um, as well as um, working in the public sector. So teachers, um, as well as um, other public um, organizations. So if I could have the next slide, um, the next slide really just shows some of the places that our students have gone. Right? So if you look sort of on the right hand side of this slide, um, there's a lot of, of, of companies that our students have gone on to, to work for. Um, so different laboratories, some of them food science, some of them pharmaceuticals, some of them more chemical companies. Um, and then on the other side of the slide, you'll see some of the universities that our students go to. So whether they're going for medical school or whether they're going for a master's program or a PhD program, our students have gotten into and, and succeed very well in graduate school. Um, because they've had those undergraduate um, research experiences and because they've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um, with faculty, which doesn't happen at all institutions. Um, and we're really proud of that. And we work really hard um, to get our students to the point where they can be successful in some of the best um, uh, entry-level jobs and some of the best um, graduate programs in the country. So um, if I can have the next slide. Um, I was going to talk about some of the things that we in biology do um, to help our students get to all of those um, great opportunities at the end, right? So um, in addition to Rowan's advancement, so there's a, a, an, a, a um, career advancement office that Rowan runs, which is excellent, which helps students with interviewing skills and resumes and those sorts of things, but they're, so they're sort of general, right? Um, they do a great job. Um, but we also supplement that with biology specific workshops. So we will have resume writing workshops um, where we have four or five faculty come and one-on-one -on -one work with students on their resumes for biology jobs, right? Or for biology graduate programs. Um, we'll have cover letter writing workshops, um, personal statements, those for health professions, um, how to find an internship, right? How to get involved in research. What about summer research programs? So we do all sorts of workshops where multiple fac faculty will come and we'll do one-on-one -on -one career mentoring with students. Um, so we do workshops as well as students are often in our offices talking about their careers. Um, and, and as a department, we're really invested in this. So we spend a lot of time. Now, in addition to what biology does for career workshops, um, there is um, a campus-wide um, health office of health professions. So if you're interested in um, the health profession, so medical school, dental school, uh, physical assistance, uh, physical therapy, um, you know, uh, physician assistance programs, all of those health professions, there is the office of health professions. Um, so they have specialized um, advising um, as well as um, talks, et cetera, for those students so that they are well prepared when they get ready to put those applications in. Um, our department also does pre-graduate school advising. I am one of those pre-graduate school advisors. Um, so if you're interested in cell development, genetics, virology, microbiology, you would come to me um, and I could help you figure out what programs to apply for, um, how to put that application together, when those deadlines are, how to get yourself so that you are competitive for the best programs. Um, and then we have other faculty who, if you're interested in ecology, evolution, um, other areas of biology, there's a different faculty member who will mentor those students. Um, the other thing that we really are proud of is that we have a lot of student driven professional clubs. So Dr. Holbrook talked at the beginning about building a community within our major, right? We're a pretty big major on campus, like 
biology is on most campuses. Um, and we try to build that community through those outreach programs and through our research experiences, but also through student clubs. Um, and the clubs that I'm going to focus on really are our professional clubs. So these are student run clubs. Um, and they focus on how to, to get prepared for these great programs that you might want afterwards. I mentioned earlier, we have a really great pre-vet program in part because we have a really great pre-vet club, right? So student founded club, student run club. Um, they'll bring speakers in from various veterinary schools across, um, across the region. They will have um, workshops on how to get a, a, a job in a, in a veterinary clinic. They will do all sorts of networking for our students. And that's true of our pre-health club and our pre-dental club. Um, they are really connected with the local um, community um, and they will bring in speakers. They work on students' um, resumes as well. Um, they will do um, lots of different workshops and it builds a community among the pre-health students, right? Um, we also have a bio club. So it sort of seems kind of general and it is, right? Which is we have a, a nice diverse group of students and uh, with diverse interests. Um, and those students in the bio club um, what they will do is they will have um, professional development workshops for getting into graduate schools. So how to get into a master's program, how to get in a PhD program. So again, student run clubs. And then we have some specialized clubs that are you know, more campus wide. So the Minority Association of Pre-Medical Students um, is MAPS. And then the Women um, Inspiring the Next Generation of Scientists is a university wide um, organization for women in STEM. So um, these professional clubs are really about helping students get to that next step, as well as building community um, within our um, department. And I think I am, if we can have the next slide, and I think I may be giving it back to Bridget, right, to um, be able to do the questions and answers. Yeah, thank you. We're gonna do some questions now. If um, if you have any questions, I encourage you to go into the chat box and enter them directly. At this point, I'm going to stop sharing the presentation screen and ask all of our panelists to share their camera and their mic so that they can participate in the Q&A. So I have a question on transferring. If I'm thinking of transferring to Rowan, um, what is the process for transfer students? Do we have any transfer students with yes. us today? Hey, Rachel, yes, could you me. talk about that? Yes. Um, so I transferred from a um, county college to Rowan and it was a really smooth process for me. Um, the academic advising, everyone there told me not to worry. They were gonna get everything in order for me. Um, my transcript was able to get um, processed over to Rowan pretty fast, especially during the pandemic that we are in. Um, and my success in my classes through that transfer process is really shown. I'm doing really well. Um, I know which classes I have to take. And so the transfer process is really good and I have no complaints about it. Great. Um, any faculty want to chime in on the transfer students and how they get up to speed? Um, we can, one thing to mention is uh, the way our curriculum is uh, structured, uh, you know, students would normally be starting as freshmen taking a couple of classes that, but we actually have a four course sequence. So when a student shows up in their junior year, we actually have a special transfer uh, skills class, which is essentially, because we know you've taken biology courses somewhere else. Uh, we want to uh, use this as a way for you to kind of fill in any um, gaps essentially, or make sure that you're prepared for the next step. So students will take that special transfer course that prepares them actually for a, a lot of their electives as well as for the fourth course in our course sequence so that they can, uh, so that, and it's also a nice opportunity 
to help transfer students build their own community among each other because they're put in a class to, oh, well, there's actually usually multiple sections, but they're usually in a class with a bunch of other transfer students. So they have people with a common experience or a similar experience at least that they can kind of relate to uh, in that class. Just one more thing. We also work um, well with our um, partner community colleges. So the, the RCs, their own colleges. Um, and so there's been some, uh, coordination of curricula and the like so that the students that are coming from the um, Roden colleges have a really smooth transition um, into the university. Great. So Bridget, I see some questions regarding the pre-medical program that I can address and then I would um, welcome Dr. Krufka to jump in since she's part of that advising as well. Um, so the question is, do we have a dual degree physician assistant with physician assistant programs. And we do not have a dual degree program like that, but we do assist students with their applications and their interviewing. We have very specialized advising in addition to your Rowan advisor. We also have specialized pre-health uh, pre advisors um, and there's different programs that we bring in speakers. We bring in people to help you complete your applications. Um, we have an interview, a mock interview process. So we have lots of opportunity for you to be able to move on to your, your next step and whatever that goal is. Um, we do connect students to facilities for shadowing opportunities. And I, you know, I can't guess how many pre-medical students we have. So students select that they're interested in pre-medical programs. Um, so we have many, but that start out in that direction. And then they find sometimes that they're really interested in maybe base, staying with basic science and moving into a PhD program or moving to a different type of um, master's program. Great. Did any faculty want to chime in on that or should we move on? I, I would I would reiterate a bit about what uh, Dr. Rivelli has said is that the, the health professions um, office is, is really great at, um, you know, helping our students find things like shadowing or figuring out how to take the MCAT um, or the DAT or the OAT, depending on what sort of pre-health you're interested in. Um, and as well as the student clubs do a lot of that as well, right? So there's different there's different avenues, right? Um, there's certainly the, the, the formal process. And then there's a lot of community among the students um, in preparing. You know, there, there, there's students that have done some, you know, like, I see them in, in well, pre-pandemic, saw them in the labs on a Friday afternoon, you know, just practicing MCAT problems together, right? Or, or doing, you know, a, you know a, a, a case study on their own, preparing themselves for the sorts of questions that they ultimately might get on the MCAT. And so there's a lot of that community around, um, as well as the formal health professions advising. And I would just add at the end of the, program, I'll be showing a contact screen um, with the email address for health advising, which connects you directly with the Office of Health Professions. And just to touch on the MCAT, I know this year we have a discounted rate for MCAT and other professional uh, testing programs that students can take advantage of. I'll chime um, in just a little bit here too on that point. It's really important for students who do wish to go to medical school or PA programs, I think, to get in a lab and do some research for two reasons. Number one is it's a great resume builder. It looks really good on your application to medical school or a PA program. And number two, there are some students who start off as freshmen thinking they want to become a physician. And then they work in a lab for a couple of years and they realize this is really exciting. This is really interesting. And with this new exposure, they decide to change their career path and maybe get a PhD. Also realize that many medical schools have dual PhD MD programs. And if a student has research experience, they can get both degrees. It's a long road, but if that's what you love doing, then that's a great career path. Great, thank you so much. So speaking of research, we've talked so much about how important it is and all these wonderful opportunities. What advice do you have to a student that's coming in, um, maybe just still getting familiar with the program at Rowan, they're a freshman or heading into their sophomore year and they wanna do research, but they're not really quite sure 
how to get involved, how to figure out which professors are doing, which research, what do you recommend for them? I'll, I'll chime in here and uh, um, the students that work in my lab and my lab is uh, exclusively uh, comprised of undergrad uh, students. Um, all these students have contacted me directly. And, and I think that this is something that um, all professors and scientists like if you if you contact them directly and if you come and show that you are interested in their research. Um, we all have um, web pages that can be found relatively easily on uh, uh, the college uh, website, on the departmental website where we describe our research, we um, show our uh, publications and that's a good way for students to uh, contact uh, their faculty directly. Sometimes it can be a little bit, um, you know, uh, students will be a bit wary or impressed going directly to a faculty, especially for freshmen when they don't know exactly how these professors are. And, uh, um, but I would still encourage the, the student to go there or go to um, the head uh, of the department asking for where um, they can find research. Uh, I've been asked recently uh, if I wanted to be a sort of the uh, coordinator for uh, or the, the point of contact for students who are interested in doing research in my departments. And I, so this is also opportunities um, for that. Um, so uh, if you want to do research, um, go to your professors. You can go early uh, as freshmen, uh, as sophomore, and show that you are interested. And personally, what I like is that the student can show that they have interest in what I am doing. Um, and do your homework. Uh, look at what the professor is researching and then uh, ask questions about that. Be as specific as you want. Uh, but you should ask a lot of people around and, uh, and see what really fits your interest best. And, and I would just add one more thing. Um, that would be talk to your faculty in the classes that you have your first and second year, right? Um, we have a, a, a our, our curriculum is built so that you you sp you have um, a lot of one on one time in your classes and in the lab. Make sure those faculty know you're interested in doing research. They'll have good advice on you know on campus experiences and off campus experiences. The advantage of being at a place like Rowan is that the class size is still small. Right? It's a small introductory course, right? We have, as Dr. Holbrook said, somewhere between 24 and 26 students in that first class that you take. Take advantage of that. Talk to your faculty yeah. members, right? Um, this is a good opportunity um, to get to know what's going on in the department, right? What's going on across the, the, the uh, college um, and across the university because some of our students do research in, with biology faculty some of them do research, like um, like Rachel's doing research with you know someone in music therapy, right? That's in the College of Performing Arts, right? And she's working with a biologist with a data analysis, right? And we have lots of examples of that where students are going to work across campus, maybe in psychology, maybe in biochemistry, maybe molecular cellular biology, maybe in engineering. Um, so talking to your faculty, they'll know the interests of faculty across the campus, and they can help connect you as well. Maybe and I see. Can, uh, uh, ask the the student our two yes. students. How did you get into labs? So my, I'm also a transfer student. My first semester, I saw that the ecological diversity group was looking for more undergraduate researchers, and I put together a resume and a cover letter, and I sent it, and I really interviewed with them and told them about my interest in ecology and what they were doing and why I wanted to join. And it was a great experience. And these were with professors that I had not had in classes before since I had just transferred. And it also built up my relationship with professors within the Department of Biology. So it was a great experience all around. And Rachel, I see you nodding your head along too. Would you like to add? Yes, so um, I attended a workshop um, 
that Dr. Spielman hosted. And I just, I was so interested in data science. I never would have thought I would be interested in that because I am pre-med. So I emailed her. Um, I asked her if there was any way I could join her lab. And thankfully she brought me along. Um, and the collaboration with um, Dr. Hunt um, was amazing because I am a musician and I, and um, the classes I wrote, I got really interested in psychology. So this research experience, it really just proves that you should really have, you shouldn't really have a narrow path to really open your eyes to new experiences and new research. And I would imagine that if a student is um, pre-med or anticipating that they're going into graduate school, that doing research with a faculty is a great way to get a wonderful recommendation um, for their application. Um, Jennifer, do you see anything else in the chat box right now that you think we should address? I do not. I, it looks like we have some questions about scholarships. Okay. Um, so at this point, I noticed that we have Sharissa Burgos from our um, admissions department joining us. Thank you so much, Sharissa, for signing on. Um, would you like to talk about our scholarship programs at Rowan? Sure, my pleasure. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, we, um, we do offer scholarships at Rowan. We have a number of different ways students can get scholarships. Um, timing is of the essence today. So today is our scholarship deadline. So if you haven't applied yet, I definitely suggest once you hop off of this Zoom call um, to get started on that Common App. As long as you have that Common App submitted, um, all of the other uh, pieces that go along with your application, like your transcript, your recommendation letters, all of those things can come after. But as long as we have that Common App through the system today, you'll be good to go. Um, and students are automatically considered for the scholarship. So once you hear back from us with a decision, um, you'll see what you've been offered in your acceptance letter. Um, for our out-of-state students, I don't know if we have any out-of-state students joining us today, we do have what we call the brown and gold out-of-state scholarship. So again, similar to the merit scholarship, if you're offered anything, that'll be listed in your acceptance letter. Um, some other scholarships we offer, if anyone is in high school here, uh, like junior, um, sophomore, freshman, we have the micro scholarships with Raise Me. I know a lot of people are familiar with that. If you go to raise.me, um, you can start um, gaining small micro scholarships for things like um, attending, you know, uh, events that these colleges are having. Um, what are some other small ways? Getting A's in your core classes, and then you build the banks. So by the time you go on to apply to this school, um, you have a bank of scholarship with that school. Um, and then we have the uh, foundation scholarship. So once you're a current student, that's another way for you to uh, apply to different scholarships while you're a current student, so. Great. Um, a couple of other things that I think would be really useful for the students that are joining us today is um, some of them may not be aware that we have an honors college. Um, could you talk about, you know, not only Sharissa, if there's any faculty that want to chime in, what are the benefits of our Honors College and some of the special privileges that being an Honors student provides? Yeah, so from the admission standpoint, just to kind of speak on what that looks like um, when you're accepted. Um, so again, once you submit that Common App, you need a 3.9 GPA. We are test optional in admissions this year. So you'll need a 3.9 GPA to be considered for the Honors Program. Um, once you're accepted, you get um, access to your personalized student ap application portal. And in that portal, you're gonna see, um, again, your college finance plan that lists all of your scholarships. But if you are um, accepted to apply into honors, you'll see the honors application in that portal. Um, so you go on and apply. Uh, the deadline to apply is February 21st this year, and you'll hear back. Um, just kind of briefly speak on the benefits. Um, I think, you know, it speaks for itself. Um, one, you get, special classes in honors. I know that they offer special classes to our honors students specifically, and they also get, um, you know, the living learning communities with the honors program. So um, if you're not familiar with living and learning communities, um, this is where uh, students that share, whether it's a major or like being in the honors program, live in the same housing. Um, so you are living and learning with like-minded students, which is really nice. Um, and you get priority registration. And I know that's one benefit for our honors students. So if I miss anything, please do that. Chris, so we have a question in the 
in the chat box about uh, an out of state student who's talking about scholarships and that um, they never got any kind of scholarship information with their acceptance letter is should they reach out or is, do those well, do the financial letters come after they get the acceptance. Yes, yeah, so the college financing plans come 10 days after your acceptance letter if you filled out the FAFSA. Um, if you don't see anything, I can definitely, I'm going to share it in the chat box, my email, feel free to reach out so I can look a little deeper into um, your application and we can get to the bottom of it. And I just posted the link to the Brown and Gold out of state scholarship information. Thank you. And uh, I just, I said this in a few of the sessions before, um, if you haven't been uh, had a chance to visit our campus, and I know it's been really tough with COVID, um, we are offering what we uh, call the audio uh, self-guided tours. Uh, so it's really nice. You can stream that on Spotify, on Apple Music, um, and they are, it, it's like go at your own pace. You can visit the sites that you want to visit, um, and they are recorded by our actual um, student ambassadors who give tours. So you're getting the same content you would if you were here on a tour. Okay, great. Um, at this point, I think um, the only other thing I want to touch on the last question um, before we run out of time is um, I just want to make sure that the students realize that at Rowan they're getting a top notch education. I mean, you've just heard all of the research projects that they can get involved in and that even though it's a big group of biology students, they are still experiencing this close knit intimate feel. And we're doing that at a, we're providing that at a very affordable price. So um, Carissa, if you could just give us real quick, um, just some of the breakdowns. I know we may not have the numbers exactly for next year, but what can a student expect to pay? unmute myself. <laughs> um, yeah, so tuition uh, this year is $14,000. For my out-of-state students, you're looking at about $22,832. Uh, when you get that college financing plan, it is going to have a an average, um, because at that point, when you get accepted, you're not applying for housing at that point. So we like to give an average so you just, you know, have a an awareness of what you can expect to be paying. Um, so room and board for a freshman student on average is about $12,900. Um, so for, you know, totals, looking at about $26,904 for an in-state student and $35,700 for an out-of-state student. Um, and that is before you receive any of your scholarship or financial aid. So again, that uh, college financing plan really helps to break it down for students um, because it breaks down what you're getting in scholarships, um, grants, and loans. So you can see what your actual cost is. I think it's also really important to remember that Rowan has a tremendous amount of scholarships that are afforded to students who are currently students. So who are who are, you know, in their second, third, fourth year, um, there's lots of opportunities for scholarships at Rowan. So if you don't if you don't get the exact amount that you're hoping for to come in, there's lots of opportunities along the way. Yes. Agreed. And another uh, thing I mentioned, uh, you know, when I was applying for colleges, you want to reach out to your school counselors. I know it's been really tough, again, being virtual, um, but there are a lot of local scholarships within your community. Um, so reaching out to your school counselor, they often are the first person who gets that information um, for those local scholarships. So uh, definitely reach out to them and see if they know of anything, too. And those scholarships do follow you to the school that you choose. That's a, that's a great point. Excellent. Thank you for reminding everyone of that. Um, so at this point, I'm going to resume sharing my screen. Um, if you have any questions, just reach out. We can provide these um, emails, phone numbers, and links again. We are doing um, in-person tours. You can also do a audio tour with your family. Um, our, just as a reminder, our general decision application deadline for next fall is March 1st. Um, and with that, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today and please enjoy the rest of your day.